In this video, I'm going to show you how to put the thumb piece on my Traditions Kentucky Rifle. So I did mention in one of my last videos that I'm not able to use the shop due to unforeseen circumstances. But I uh, was able to get everything done in the kitchen for the remainder of the build. Just kind of the moral of the story there is you don't necessarily need like a fancy workshop or anything like that. If you got to do it on your kitchen table, that works just fine. But anyways, getting back to the topic at hand here, the first step to getting the thumb piece on was to figure out where you want it on the wrist and then bend it into shape. So to bend it into shape, I used two wrenches that were flat without the grip on it to avoid scratching the thumb piece at all. I did choose a silver thumb piece just because I liked the idea of having a different colored thumb piece than the rest of the brass that I put on the rifle. Just a personal preference. And uh, this thumb piece did not come with a gun kit. This is something that I picked out to kind of personalize the rifle. And I didn't do any scratchings or etchings into it or anything like that. No fancy designs. I just wanted a thumb piece in there. Mostly because thumb pieces were pretty common back in the day. When these rifles were commonly used. And I wanted to have that kind of authentic look to it. Once I was satisfied with the shape of the thumb piece. And figured pretty much where it was going to be. The next step was to take a pencil and trace the outline of the thumb piece where I wanted it on the wrist. Once I had the outline traced and I was happy with the position of it and make, making sure it was centered and looked good, I then began the process of inletting the thumb piece. Big thing I learned with inletting and ever, anything on this project as far as using chisels is that you gotta have sharp tools. If you don't, it makes your project difficult. You don't get clean cuts, and it just makes everything a lot more difficult. It's worth the extra time to stop and sharpen your chisels if you have to. I realized after looking back at my footage of this process that I didn't take very good video, or close-up video, of what I was doing. But I pretty much followed the same process that I did with the inletting of the side plate, if you've already watched that. So pretty much taking chisels, going around the tracing, and just kind of making an indent into the wood as a stopping point from when I began chiseling out the inside. I made this indent by using a rubber-handled screwdriver because I didn't have a soft hammer. Ideally, you want to use a wooden mallet or something like that. It's a little bit softer and can absorb some of the shock. I was also very careful when going around the tracing to not go too deep because you can always make it deeper if you have to but if you make it too deep initially you might have some issues with the thumb piece being inlet too deep and then you're taking more wood off and I didn't want to have to do that. So after making the back stop around the tracing I went ahead and started carefully chiseling out along the edge and just started whittling away and you know just carefully taking my time it's a tedious process but it's a lot easier to take your time on it and make sure you get it right the first time rather than trying to fix a mistake that you make because you're going too fast to assist with the process I did use some inletting black which did help to find out which parts were more raised than others and it, it just helps avoid unnecessary mistakes and it really helps the process go a lot smoother. My inlanding job was a little bit rough so I did use a sanding pad which has kind of the consistency of a sponge to kind of smooth up the edges as uh, they were just a little bit rough. I don't know if this is proper technique to the do this with woodworking or not but this worked for me it just kind of blended everything together pretty well and uh, it actually helped to fit that thumb piece in there a little bit better so now that the thumb piece was all inletted and good to go it's time to drill the holes so I could nail it in to secure it first I marked where I wanted the holes on my thumb piece 
by using a permanent marker to draw on the back of the thumb piece and make sure that that was centered exactly where I wanted it. Then again, I was just working in my kitchen, so I didn't really want to ruin the kitchen table, and uh, a lot of my drilling was done right on the floor. I used an awl to get the holes started on the back side of the thumb piece. It was important to make sure that I was drilling everything on the back side because if I was drilling the holes in the top, there was potential to bend that thumb piece back flat. Because I didn't have a vise or anything, I just put the awl on the back of the thumb piece and then uh, rested the hammer on top of the awl to hold the thumb piece in place. And then using a titanium drill bit and a hand crank drill, I drilled a hole through the thumb piece. And I actually ended up drilling into the linoleum as well, so I ended up moving onto the carpet for the second hole. Once I decided the holes were good, I used a fine tooth file to knock down all the sharp edges on the top side of the thumb piece. Once the holes were drilled, I checked them for fit with the nails I had chose to use. The nails were just some nails that were silver in color, and I just happened to find them in a drawer in the kitchen. Just picture hanging nails. I used a countersink on the top side of the thumb piece so that the nail could drop in far enough as I had planned to file off the top of the nail. And I just wanted to make sure that there was enough of the head of the nail to hold the thumb piece in place. It was important as well to make sure I went slow with the countersink to make sure that I didn't go too deep and make the hole too big for the nail. Once that was done, I taped the thumb piece onto the wrist to make sure that it didn't move, and then I nailed in the nails for the thumb piece. I was careful not to smash down too hard on the thumb piece with the hammer to avoid flattening it too much, so I finished off the rest of the nails with the handle end of my file. Now that the nails were in, I could use a fine tooth file to get everything flush on the top of the thumb piece, as well as the wood surrounding the thumb piece. This is also my opportunity to make sure that everything was nice and smooth and flush, and I did some fine tuning with the file, as well as uh, some finishing touches with the sandpaper. I pretty much just determined when it was good enough for me based on how it looked and how it felt. I know it wasn't perfect, but I was pretty happy with it, and I figured this was probably going to be one of the most difficult inletting jobs of the entire rifle just because of the contour of the wrist and having to bend the thumb piece itself, but I was pretty happy with it, and I think it turned out pretty well.